tip of the week uh, we have here is the SAP single sign-on. And uh, what we might run into in some instances, uh, the problem that a client would have is that they might have a lot of different passwords that they have to constantly manage. And, you know, some clients implement password managers and other things, and some do not. This can lead to, obviously, forgotten passwords that can lock a SAP user out of SAP which then also causes issues of having to submit a support ticket to get it unlocked. And then that creates a loss of productivity. And that also can then impact the client's bottom line because, you know, time is money. So what is a solution to this then? Well, SAP does provide a single sign-on functionality that allows the SAP user to be associated to the Microsoft domain user that exists for that client. Um, what they can then do is essentially log in with their Windows account when that's all assigned and uh, associated to the SAP user, which means that they don't have to provide their SAP user ID or their password because all of that association is done. And when they log into the domain, it's authenticated. So then they can open SAP with that. So how do we set that up? First off, in SAP under the user, there's an option that says, uh, you know, bind with Microsoft Windows account. So that always has to contain a domain. So depending upon the client, it's, they'll usually provide what that domain is and then the backslash and then the uh, username of that domain user. So what they would be using to log into that Active Directory. Um, it'll have to be done for all SAP users and it'll have to be done on all databases that would be accessed in this way. If it is not set up, then users will not see those databases in their list of change company, just as a caveat. Once all that's been set up, the next step is to go into the system landscape directory, go to the security tab, and then to click the enable single sign-on uh, log on using Windows domain account. This then enables SAP to recognize that it's going to use the domain account to authenticate into SAP. It's also important to note that you typically don't want to disable logons with the business uh, SAP Business One user accounts, because if for some reason you do run into an issue or say like for our support, if we don't necessarily have a domain user that we want to associate to say like the support user, because there might be individual domain users that we're using, but we all use the support user to get into SAP, uh, we would want to be able to still provide the support user and password. And so by not having this checked, it allows you to do that. Then once everything is set up, the first time that you log on to uh, SAP, you'll be greeted by the window domain user binding confirmation. So depending upon which user you are binding on, you'll provide the SAP password once. It then creates that binding and subsequent logons, they're not asked again and it will just authenticate into SAP. So in uh, resolution of this, by enabling a single sign-on, clients will have less passwords that they necessarily have to manage. And in doing that, it will prevent clients from running into those scenarios where they're then losing time and money by having to wait on somebody to unlock a user, which will in turn actually help them increase productivity and will also help increase their profits.